So it is January 7th, 2022. I have a question for my sister. Oh, man. Excuse me. All right. I got a question for Polly. Put her on speaker. Put Polly no. on speaker. No, I'm not. Oh, okay, tell her that. Me, wait. I'm not putting her on speaker. Tell her that the Dijon Blacks are sold at 7-Elevens. They, they sell that. They... As long as they're labeled as being sold as cigars, you you can purchase them at 7-Elevens. Yeah, they, okay. I, well, no, within this area, I'm saying. So if she ever... Is there a 7-Eleven by her? I, there used to be no more. No? No, they changed it to something else. No, no, they're all... There's still some... No, oh, they're not oh, you a mean, okay. Oh, you anymore. mean... You mean the one by her has her. changed. Okay. Well, if she drives by a 7-Eleven next time within the vicinity coming towards here, she could pick me up some Dijon Blacks. Just tell yeah, her. okay. Tell her. All right. She does, you didn't tell her about. I didn't get that far. Okay, well tell You're her. still talking. He wants me to tell you that if you pass a 7-Eleven, pick him up some of those Dijon Blacks. They carry them at 7-Eleven. That's uh, all I want to yeah, say. Yeah, as, as they're, they're legal as long as they're sold as cigars. Yeah, okay. Legal okay. as long as they're sold as cigars. Labeled as cigars. Uh, yeah, all right, okay. Let's go inside. Okay. Good. It's because the tar content in them is over like 1.5 milli 25 milligrams. Point 1.25 milligrams, I believe it is, on the side of the box. Yeah. I think Unicorn Girl may want to share, um, not necessarily one cigarette. I mean, one Dijon Black. Uh, it all depends. You can maybe have like a little smoke break or something. Get together if she's interested in that. Flow of cigarettes, and then we can get a dry a dry herb e hookah attachment for a um, hookah. You know, it's a e hookah is a um, then it's an attachment you attach to a regular hookah for um, vaporizing dry herb. Um, instead of getting the cartridges which aren't that healthy because the cartridges in the way the heating element is supposedly they they add other um chemicals to it other than just nicotine and it's uh, something in there it could be nickel you know some people end up with a nickel allergy from using the cartridge based um Hookah, not who wait, the cartridge based vapes are a bit more dangerous than let's say the dry herb vapes and with the dry herb vapes you can make your own herbal mixtures and things like that i'm i'm familiar with certain herbs that i stay away from nowadays when i was younger i uh, explored other herbs that would be uh it could be a problem white sage is okay to put in as a in with the blend of uh, herbs, as long as it's in smaller amounts. I've smoked white sage when I was younger in the past. Some people do that in, um, you know, they, they, uh, hookah tobacco, basically, it's a mixture of herbs, and they sometimes add, uh, what is it? Molasses or honey or something as a uh, sweetener or something like that binder a binder of sort other than that um there are they do sell herbal cigarettes online that are more popular now for those who want to cut back on nicotine but those could be controversial too depending on how you know what type of herbs that they include in those mixtures. When I was in high school, I used to make my own herbal mixtures and things like that. 
it was by herbal teas that had, you know, certain herbs in there. And then I would, you know, sometimes smoke the entire, entire herbal tea without extracting the stuff. In most cases, that's how I would, you know, roll it up with the zigzags and things like that. But I'm not going to do it that way. I'd rather just get the jar and blacks, you know, clove herbal, uh, clove cigarettes or something like that. You know, the jar and blacks are nice. They they have a bit of a licorice like um, spicy but licorice sweet type of fragrance to it to them. The filters on them are pretty good. I um, without even a uh, vape, e hookah vape attachment. I just thought maybe you know be it'd be fun to have like a little social evening smoke, but with a you know group of friends or something like that. The jar and blacks and the e hookah attachment or something. I don't have a medical cannabis license or anything like that, medicinal cannabis license, so I'm not going to um, go down that route unless uh, I get one eventually down the line. If I did have one and if I was allowed to have a plant in the house, I would try to get the uh, like a blueberry Dutch passion uh can a bonsai plant you know it have a, it done professionally or something like that and have it on let's say a coffee table somewhere so i i don't agree with the way that when you let's say if you go to a, a medicinal cannabis dispensary how they have them in the jars the way that they're at, you know tons of it in jars and like i know that you can have i think possibly up to six plants in some states. I'm not sure about here where I live, but in my case, I would, I would prefer to have them in a, you know, uh, well-trimmed kind of like a can of bonsai type of, um, uh, how do I put that? Control. You know what I mean? I wouldn't want a six foot plant in the house. Maybe that, maybe with one, it would be maybe three to four feet above the ground in a large pot or something like that. But I like the artistic uh, sculpted methods that are used for, let's say the can of bonsai ones. They just look more artistic. And I am a bit zen. I do like the idea of um, using things in small quantities. I may even just ha like to have one, just to own one. I may not even smoke it, you know what I'm saying? Maybe just there to say um, decorative piece to take care of or something eventually down the line but i'm more interested right now in the whole thing with the um i'm not really more interested but it would just be interesting to to have a um an e hook dry herb e hook uh, and then something as uh maybe an afternoon evening type of um thing you know how some people have their tea and coffee in the afternoon we could still do that we could do something like that even tea and coffee gluten-free vegan cakes and pastries and then uh, in addition to maybe that the jarn black type of thing anyways um it's there i wouldn't say they're they're not even addictive really just I never became addicted to um, cigarettes. I smoked various other cigarettes. I've smoked Camels before. I've had the flavored ones in around 2005 when they came out. There was like a limited edition uh, flavored Camel cigarettes that uh, had 
they're like berry flavored or something, a bit mild. I don't, I've had uh, miniature cigars in the past, One, a small package of um, miniature cigars. Yeah, uh, I'm more interested, I've had clove cigarettes many times in my early 20s. I used to buy, you know, buy a pack every like week, basically. I would have like one one a day or one every other day and then it, the, I just couldn't continue purchasing them because I couldn't afford them at the time that was like 18 years ago I didn't I didn't have a, a way of uh, continuing to buy them uh, I used to share them with uh, one of my other friends he used to get them too so do, 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 do. It's weird how my face looks different on different days, different camera angles. It's weird. Just an idea. I do like gluten-free vegan uh, pastries, cupcakes, cakes, things like that, cookies. I can't find them around where I live. I know they, one of the other stores nearby did have those Abe's cupcakes or no, Abe's muffins that are vegan. They're pretty good. I get the, um, these wafers now. They're just accidentally, incidentally vegan. They're not labeled vegan, but they're, um, labeled parv. So, and I looked that up, and that means that they don't use any animal, other than I read the ingredients, and there's there's nothing on the ingredient list that um, is too um, convincing that it would have something to speculate whether it would be vegan. It looked completely vegan, so... I forget the brands of these, but my sister p picks them up whenever she goes to the store. I ask her to get like two, two bricks of these wafers. They're chocolate. I did a video on them. Bridget, why? Um, what's the brand of those wafers that you buy? The chocolate wafers. Do you know what they're called? What the brand name is again? Oh, you don't know? Okay. Yeah, they're okay, too. Anyways, I wouldn't mind having, like, a gluten-free vegan apple strudel. Or, um, that type of thing with the flaky crust. You could use Earth Balance vegan margarine. I've tried to do flaky crust once with the vegan, uh, cream cheese, but as a substitute for, let's say, vegan margarine... I didn't do it the method that the instruct the recipe online I had found or came across. I used vegan cream cheese thinking that would be a good substitute and it didn't really work well. So I mean it would probably require um the vegan margarine. Yeah. But I wouldn't mind having like gluten free vegan French crawlers or um 